Let's go to page 348 and start with number 1. Okay, you have 3x plus 1 squared equal to 8. And you want to solve. So first, let's go and undo the square. So take the square root on both sides. And make sure you have plus or minus. So square and square root cancel out. And to, to simplify square root of 8, you break it down. Divide by 2, you get 4. Divide by 2, you get 2. Divide by 2, you get 1. So you're going to end up with 2 squared of 2. <clears throat> um, then after that, go ahead and minus 1 on both sides. So you got 3x equal to negative 1 plus or minus 2 squared of 2. And then divide by 3, divide by 3. So x equal to negative 1 plus or minus 2 squared of 2 over 3. Okay, number two, you have 2x squared plus 6x plus 3 equal to 0. And you want to solve by completing the square. So first, let's get rid of this number, so minus 3 on both sides. So you got 2x squared plus 6x equal to negative 3. Then after, you have to get rid of this number, so divide by 2. So you got x squared plus 3x equal to negative 3 over 2. Now make sure you leave a blank space over here for the missing number. Okay, so to complete a square, you need to go and get your perfect square ready. <clears throat> so to get this, we need to have an x. To get this one, we need to have plus 3 over 2. Again, this is going to be half of that. Now, to get from here to here, you're missing a number over here. And that number is the square of this. So, so it's positive square give you positive. 3 square give you 9. 2 squared give you 4. So you need to plus 9 over 4 on this side. So you need to do the same on the other side. So it, because it equals, you have to do the same on both sides. Okay, so now to add this, you go up to the side, or you can use calculator. So you got negative 3 over 2 plus 9 over 4. You need to go and get your common denominator. So from here to here, you need to multiply by 2. So this is going to give you negative 6. And this will give you 9. So this will equal to 3 over 4. Okay? So you add this, it will equal to 3 over 4. <clears throat> okay, so now you're ready to solve this. So now this becomes like problem number 1. Okay? So to solve, you take the square root on both sides. And again, remember your plus or minus. Square and square root cancel out. And square root of 2 would be still uh, remain square root of 3. Square root of 4 would give you 2. And after that, go and minus 3 over 2 on each side. So you got x equal to negative 3 over 2 plus or minus square root of 3 over 2. And since you are a common denominator, you can put them together. So you got x equal to negative 3 plus or minus square root of 3 over 2. <coughs> Okay, number three. <clears throat> okay, you have 4x squared minus 3x plus 2 equal to 0. And you want to use quadratic formula. So let's get the a equal to 4, b equal to negative 3, c equal to 2. So you get x equal to negative b. So you can, whatever you substitute put in parentheses, help you to keep track of your negatives. So negative b plus or minus square root of b square minus 4ac over 2a. <clears throat> so this one, get, and this one becomes positive 3 plus or minus square root of negative 3 squared will give you 9 minus, uh, this will give you 32 over 8. So x will equal to 3 plus or minus square root of negative 23 over 8. Okay. And so this will equal to um, so the square root of negative becomes i, so it be square root of 23, i over 8. And normally, when you have complex numbers, you want to separate the real part from the imaginary part. So write in the a plus bi form, so you got 3 over 8 plus or minus square root of 23 over 8, i. <clears throat> <clears throat> ok, 
Okay, number four. Okay, number four. It says two positive numbers have sum of seven and the product of eleven. Find the numbers. So the two real, two positive real numbers, we can call it R one and R two. Okay, you can you can call it x and y, but let's call it call it R one and R two. So two numbers. So one is R one, the other one is R two. The sum of them equal to seven, and the product equal to eleven. And the reason you call it R one R two is so it becomes very familiar. Uh, information. So you can go and use your root equation. So you got x squared minus r1 plus r2 x plus r1 times r2 equal to 0. So you can substitute this in here. So x squared minus uh, 7 x plus 11 equal to 0. Okay. And so if you get rid of parentheses, you get x squared minus 7 x plus 11 equal to 0. So now you can go and solve, right? Okay, so if you solve by uh, quadratic formula, so you got a equal to 1, b equal to negative 7, c equal to 11. So you got x equal to negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. So x equal to 7 plus or minus square root of 49 minus 44 over 2. So x equal to 7 plus or minus square root of 5 over 2. Okay, so the two numbers, the two roots that you get, uh, the two answers are 7 plus square root of 5 over 2 and 7 minus square root of 5 over 2. Okay, so those are your two numbers. <coughs> and you, again, you can check. If you add, it's going to give you 7. If you multiply, it's going to give you 11. Okay. Okay, so number five are two part uh, two parts. You got five a and five b. You want to without solving the equation, determine the nature of its roots. Okay, so five a you got five x squared plus seven x plus two equal to zero. So to determine the, the roots, you need to find d. Okay, so but first let's go and get our a b c. So a equal to five, b equal to seven, c equal to two. So your discriminant d equal to b squared minus four a c. Okay, that's the part that's inside the square root. Okay, so d equal to 7 squared minus 4ac. Okay, so d equal to 49 minus 40. So d equal to 9. So d equal to 9, so you're going to, so again, d, d is the, the inside part right over here. Okay, so the inside part, this part, this is your d. So if the d is positive, you're going to get two uh, real roots, okay? and they're going to be unequal because one is plus, one is minus. Okay. So you're going to get two unequal uh, rational roots because it's a perfect square. So when there's perfect square, see, when you have square root of 9, you can take out the square root. So when there's no more square root, you're going to come out a nice number, so, so it'll be rational. Okay, let's do 5b. You have 3x squared minus 4x plus 2 equal to 0. So you got a equal to 3, b equal to negative 4, c equal to 2. Okay, so you can d equal to b squared minus 4ac. So d equal to negative 4 squared minus 4ac. So d equal to 16 minus 24. So d equal to negative 8. Again, D is the, the inside part over here. So when this is equal to negative, you're going to get imaginary numbers. Okay? So in this case, you're going to get imaginary and it's going to be conjugate. Okay? That means one is going to be plus, one is going to be minus. Next one.
Okay, so you have 2x squared plus kx plus 3 equal to 0. And you're looking for k so that you have double root. So you need to know what, what it's trying to tell you. So, so double root, that means, that means d equal to 0. Okay, again, in order to get double root means d equal to 0. So let's use similar technique we have from the previous one. So you got a equal to 2, b equal to k, c equal to 3. So write down your formula first. So d equal to b squared minus 4ac. Okay? So you can double root means d equal to 0. So substitute 0 in here. And you're going to get k squared minus 4, 2, 3. So you're going to get 0 equal to k squared minus uh, 24. And I'm going to plus 24 on each side. So I got uh, 24 is equal to k squared. And I'm going to flip it over. I don't like the variable on this side. So k squared equal to 24. And to solve for k, take the square root on both sides. So k equal to plus or minus. And to simplify 24, you go to the side, divide by 2, divide by 2, divide by 2 divide by 3, so you're going to get 2 square root of 6. Okay, so k equal to plus or minus 2 square root of 6. Okay, so here solve each equation over complex numbers. So part A, you got x to the 4 plus x squared minus 12 equal to 0. Okay, so this is the quadratic form. So this is a square of these. So what we're going to do is we're going to let z equal to x squared. So this becomes z squared plus z minus 12 equal to 0. Okay, so now we're going to do the factoring. So you have to add to get 1. You need to multiply to get negative 12. So we start with 1 comma negative 12, 2 comma negative 6, 3 comma negative 4, 4 comma negative 3. And that would be the, the correct combination. Okay, so you're going to get z plus 4, z minus 3. So from here, you're going to get z equal to negative 4, z equal to 3. After you solve for z, you put these things back in here. So you got x squared equal to negative 4, and you got x squared equal to 3. Okay. Now to solve, okay, to solve for this, you take the square root on both sides. And remember your plus or minus. So you're going to get x equal to plus or minus. Now square root of negative 1 is i, square root of 4 is 2. Okay. So you're going to get plus or minus 2i. Over here, when you take the square root on both sides, you're going to get x equal to plus or minus square root of 3. Okay, and that's it. Okay. <clears throat> okay, for 7b, you have x to the negative 2 power minus 2x to the negative 1 power minus 1 equal to 0. Okay, now, most of the people kind of don't like the negative exponent, so let's go and just do the flipping. So it's going to be 1 over x squared minus 2 times 1 over x minus 1 equal to 0. Okay, so I'm going to, so this is the square of that, so I'm going to let z equal to 1 over x. Okay, so this becomes z squared minus 2z minus 1 equal to 0. Okay, and this one is not factorable. So we have to use quadratic formula. So you're going to have a equal to 1, b equal to negative 2, c equal to negative 1. So you're going to get z equal to negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac over 2a. So you're going to get z equal to 2 plus or minus square root of 4 plus 4 over 2. So you're going to get z equal to 2 plus or minus square root of 8 over 2. So again, so a lot of little steps, but just keep going. 
and simplify the 8, okay? So you're going to get z equal to 2 plus or minus 2 squared of 2 over 2. Right? Again, you go off to the side, the 8 divided by 2, you get 4, divided by 2, you get 2, divided by 2, you get 1, right? So this 2 becomes an integer 2, this is a radicand 2. Now, everything is all multiple 2, so I'm going to divide all three parts by 2. Again, there are three parts. So divide by 2, I get 1. Divide by 2, I get 1. Divide by 2, I get 1. So z equal to 1 plus or minus square root of 2. Okay? Now, once you do that, you're going to substitute this back. So remember, z equal to 1 over x. Okay? So I'm going to substitute and, and separate. So I got 1 over x equal to 1 plus square root of 2. And I got 1 over x equal to 1 minus square root of 2. Okay. Okay. So not, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to flip both sides upside down. So x equal to one over one plus square root of two. And this side flip upside down. I got x equal to one over one minus square root of two. Okay. Now to simplify these, I need to multiply by the conjugate. Okay. So multiply by the conjugate. So one minus square root of two. One minus square root of two. Okay, I'm going to. So multiply the conjugate. Okay, so on the top, you're going to get 1 minus square root of 2. On the bottom, you're going to get 1 times 1 is 1, plus times minus is minus. Square root of 2 times square root of 2 is 2. And so this is going to give you a negative 1. So negative 1, so you're going to move the negative 1 to the top. So you're going to get negative 1 plus square root of 2. Okay, over here, you're going to do the same thing. You need to multiply by the conjugate. So 1 plus square root of 2. So you're going to get x equal to so x equal to uh, you're going to get 1 plus square root of 2 on the top on the bottom 1 times 1 is 1 negative times positive is minus square root of 2 times square root of 2 is 2 so again so 1 minus 2 is negative 1 so I'm going to put a negative 1 to the top so x equal to negative 1 minus square root of 2 okay, and so those are your two answers Okay, let's go to next one. <clears throat> okay, number eight, you want to graph the parabola, so you got y plus three equal to negative one over two times x minus two square, and you want to label the vertex and axis of the symmetry. Okay, so first, you need to get your vertex. Vertex is your starting point. So from here, your vertex is going to be 2, comma. From here, it's going to be negative 3. Okay? So, then, so that's the vertex. And next, okay, you're going to get your the 1, 3, 5. So 1, since it's half, so a equal to negative 1 half. So when you multiply, you're going to get negative 1 over 2. 3, you're going to get negative 3 over 2. 5, you're going to get negative 5 over 2. 7, again, you have to multiply by the 8, right? So negative 7 over 2. So those are your the differentials. Okay? So let's go and sketch the graph. Okay, so vertex is 2, negative 3. It's going to be right over here. All right, so 2, negative 3. And I'm going to go this way. So first time I go over, I need to go down 1 half. So go 1 over, and you need to go down 1 half. So it's going to be right over here. Next time you go over, you have to go down 3 halves. So it'll be right over here. And next time you go over, it's going to be going down by 5 over 2. So it'd be right over here. Okay? And the, the other side would be just symmet symmetrical, so it'd be right over here. And this one would be right over here. This one would be right over here. Okay, so again, they, they should all line up. Okay, and so this is your graph. Okay, so, so label your vertex at 2 comma negative 3 and your axis is the one that going down the middle 
So your axes would be x equal to 2. Okay, so those are the information you need. Okay, number nine. Okay, find the equation in the form of y minus k equal to a times x minus h squared for the parabola having the vertex. So you have vertex at negative two five and have a point at two comma nine. Okay, so to find the equation, remember your vertex is your h and k. So this is your h and that's your k. So these are spatial x and the y. Okay, they are, they, are, they are x and the y, but it's because the vertex is a unique point, so it's they, called the h and k. So just substitute this into here. So you're going to get y minus 5 equal to a times x minus negative 2 become plus 2 squared. Okay, so you substitute this into here, you get that. Now next, you have to substitute this in here to get the a, but if you substitute, you want to go up to the side so you don't uh, clutter up the major steps. So go up to the side, so you got y minus 5, you go to a times x plus 2 squared. Then you substitute all this in here, so you're going to get 9 minus 5, you go to a times uh, 2 plus 2 squared. Right? So again, those are your substitute. So x equal to 2, y equal to 9. So you're going to get 4 equal to a times 2 plus 2 is 4 squared, give you 16. So divide both sides by 16. So a equal to 1 over 4. Okay. So once you find a equal to 1 over 4, you put it back in here. So y minus 5 equal to 1 over 4 times x plus 2 squared. And that would be the answer. Okay, okay number 10. Number 10 is kind of similar. So uh, you, you want to go and put in the proper form, and then you're going to graph. Okay, so you got f of x equal to 2x squared minus 4x plus 1. Okay. And so I'm going to switch this, I'm going to change this into y. Okay. So again, f of x is y. So it's easier to use in the y. Then after that, I need to get rid of this number. So I need to minus 1 on both sides. So I got y minus 1 equal to 2x squared minus 4x. Now, to, So I need to complete the square on this side. So to do that, I need to factor out this because I don't want to have a number in front. Okay, so go and factor out the 2. So end up with x squared minus 2x. Okay. So now I need to focus on this part to make this into a perfect square. Okay, so I'm going to... Uh, Okay, make this into a perfect square. So to get this, I need to have an x. To get that, I need to have minus 1. Okay. So now this is a perfect square. But now, to get from here to here, I need to have a, this missing number. So negative 1, negative square is positive. 1 square is 1. Okay. So I notice I plus 1 on this side, but there's a 2 times. So I need to plus 2 on this side. Okay. So I need to plus 2. Okay, again, that's 1 times 2, so, I, so in reality, it's, it is plusing the 2. So I need to plus 2. So this side becomes, so negative 1 plus 2 becomes plus 1. So I need to have a plus 1. Okay, so my equation is y plus 1 equal to 2 times x minus 1 squared. Okay. Okay, now to do graphing, okay, so that's the a, that's a first part. Okay, so now to do graphing, my vertex is going to be at 1 comma, negative 1, okay, and my 1, 3, 5, so 1, 3, 5, my a equal to 2, so I need to get 2, 6, and 10, okay, okay, so let's go and try to graph this one, okay, so on number 10, the graph, Okay, so it's going to go up that way. Okay, so the vertex is 1, negative 1.
Okay, so the vertex is 1, negative 1. And so my, my numbers are, I need to do the 2, 6, and 10. Those are, my, those are my numbers I need to go. Okay, so, so the first time I go over, I need to go up 2. Next time I go over, I need to go up 6. So from here, I need to go up 6. So I'm going to end up right over here. Okay, so I'm just going to use a symmetry. So this one would be right over here. And this would be over here. Okay, so my graph would look something like this. Let's go to number 11. Okay, so you have g of x is equal to x squared minus 6x plus 4. And you're looking for the domain, you're looking for the range, and you're looking for the zeros. Okay, okay the domain is easy because for the quadratic, uh, for quadratic equation, the domain would be all real number because there's no restriction on the x. So you can use any number. Okay, now to so to before we find the range, it's easy if we find the the, um, the zeros first. So to find zeros, we set this equal to zero. Okay, and then solve, so you got a equal to 1, b equal to negative 6, c equal to 4, so x equal to negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a, so x equal to 6 plus or minus square root of 36 minus 16 over 2, so x will equal to 6 plus or minus uh, square root of 20 over 2 and you have to simplify the square root of 20 so divide by 2 you get 10 divide by 2 you get 5 divide by 5 you get 1 so you're going to get 2 square root of 5 so x equal to 6 plus or minus 2 square root of 5 over 2 and all these are multiple of 2 so I'm, I'm going to divide all 3 parts by 2 so divide by 2 I get 3 divide by 2 I get 1 divide by 2 I get 1 so x equal to 3 plus or minus square root of 5 Okay, so those are my zeros. Okay, so I get 3 plus square root of 5, 3 minus square root of 5. Okay, so those are my zeros. Now to find a range, we need to sketch out our graph. Okay, so, so the two zeros are, so you got one over here, that's 3 minus square root of 5. Again, you can just sketch it, you don't want it to be exact, and this is 3 plus square root of 5. Okay, so the vertex, so to find the range, we need to find the vertex. So vertex is going to be half in between, and so it's going to be equal to 3. So what you do, you add this together, divide by 2. So when you add, this will cancel out. So 3 plus 3 equal to 6, divide by 2, you get 3. So here's your, here, here's your, um, this is going to be your axis, okay? And you can substitute this into equation, into, into here. So you got, so y is equal to x squared minus 6x plus 4, right? So to find the vertex, you substitute the 3 into the x. That, that's what the x is. So y equal to 3 squared minus 6 times 3 plus 4. So y equal to 9 minus 18 plus 4. So y equal to negative 5, okay? So y is going to equal to negative 5. So your graph is going to look something like this. And this point is going to be 3 comma negative 5, okay? So that's what the graph kind of looks like. So now you can look for your range. Range is a value of y. So if you look over here, the y must be greater than or equal to negative 5. Okay? So you can you find your vertex, and then you can find out your range.
Okay, number twelve. Okay, so you have two roots. You got r one equal to one plus square root of three over four. You have r two equal to one minus square root of three over four. And you're looking for the equation with inter integral coefficients. So again, let's go and write our uh, root equation. So x squared minus r one plus r two x plus r one r two equal to zero. So x squared minus. So get your form ready. So you have to add this together. So when you add, the square root of 3 plus and minus will cancel out. So you got 1 over 4 plus 1 over 4 will give you 2 over 4. Okay. Now when you're doing a multiplying, again, conjugate is, is easy to multiply. You just multiply the corresponding part. So 1 times 1 is 1. Plus times minus is minus. Square root of 3 times square root of 3 is 3. 4 times 4 is 16. Okay. And so if you kind of simplify, so you get x squared minus 1 over 2x plus um, this week, 1 minus 3 will give you negative 2 over 16. Okay, and this one you can simplify more. So divide by 2, you get 1 and 8. So you get x squared minus 1 half x minus 1 over 8 equal to 0. Okay, so now you have to get rid of the fraction. So multiply everything by 8. So you got 8x squared, this will cancel out, so minus 4x is cancel out, minus 1 equal to 0. And this will be your equation. Okay. Okay, number 13. Okay, you're looking for a, a quadratic function f of x equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. And you have minimum, so here, here's your information. You got minimum is equal to negative 9, and the zeros are 1 half and negative 5 over 2. Okay. So the zeros are your roots. So basically what you have, you have r1 equal to 1 half r2 equal to negative 5 over 2. So let's go and work out the, uh, the equation first. Okay, so write down your root equation. So you get x squared minus r1 plus r2x plus r1, r2 uh, equal to 0. Okay. okay, so go ahead and substitute. So when you add, okay, 1 plus negative 5 will give you negative 4, so you're going to get negative 4 over 2. Okay, when you multiply, you're going to get negative 5 over 4. And then from here, to get rid of the, to get rid of the fraction, I'm going to multiply everything by 4. So I get 4x squared, minus and minus become plus, and this one cancel, so it become plus 8x. This one cancel be minus 5 equal to 0, okay? So this is your basic equation, but you need to find out what a is. So what you need to do is, you do this way. So f of x equal to a times 4x squared plus ax minus 5 equal to 0, okay? Okay, so that's what you have so far. The next thing is, if you, if you notice that um, the, the two points, you got negative 5 over 2, and you got one half, right? So th th those are your two roots. So your, your axis is going to be right in the middle, okay? So you need to find where the, set the middle point is because that's when, that's when you're going to find your vertex, okay? And so to find the middle point, you average the two. So to average, you go ahead and add and divide by two. So you got negative five over two plus one over two, okay? And you have to times by one half, right? That's how you find the average. So Again, you add and you take half of that. So you're going to get uh, negative 4 over 2 times 1 half. And so this will equal to negative 1. So this is going to be negative 1 over here. And the minimum is negative 9. Okay, so minimum is going to be at negative 9. So this point, your vertex is going to be at negative 1, negative 9. Okay, because for the x, it's going to be between the two, uh, two intercepts or two zeros or two roots. Okay. So once you find the vertex, it's over here, okay? You know that minimum, you can substitute this, um, you can substitute 
this point into the equation. Okay, so so this is your y. So substitute into here. So go off to so that's okay. That's going to off the side. So you got y is equal to a times four x squared plus a x minus five. Okay, so uh, shouldn't have it equal to zero over here. We don't need this part. Okay, so again, you can substitute the vertex into here. So you got negative 9 equal to a times 4 times negative 1 squared plus a times negative 1 minus 5. Okay, so you got negative 9 equal to a times, okay, so negative 1 squared is 1 times 4 is 4 minus 8 minus 5. So negative 9 equal to a times uh, negative 9. Okay, so come on, nice. So divide by negative 9. So a equal to 1. So once you find a equal to 1, you put in here. Okay, so f of x is equal to 4x squared plus ax minus 5. Okay, number 14. Okay, from the dimension of rectangles, so as soon as you see a word rectangle, go and draw a rectangle and label length width, length width. Okay, and the greatest area, from the greatest area whose perimeter is, so you're looking for the length width if the perimeter is 20. Okay, and you're looking for the maximum area. Okay, so area equal to length times width. So you got these two equations. So that's going to substitute this in here. So perimeter is all four sides. Means you got L plus W, okay, plus L plus W equal to 20. Okay, again, pyramid, perimeter means all four sides, right? So you add all four sides together, so that's what you get. Okay, and then you simplify, so you got 2L plus 2W equal to 20, and divide everything by 2, divide by 2, so you got L plus W equal to 10. Okay, so now to get the equation, what we're going to do is we're going to solve the equation. So use your algebra one scale. So I'm going to use a substitution, substitution technique. So I'm going to minus W on both sides. So I got L equal to 10 minus W. And I'm going to substitute this into here. Okay. So A equal to the L equal to that. So substitute. So 10 minus W times W. So A equal to 10 W minus W squared. Okay. And um, so to find the maximum or minimum, what you need to do is you set it equal to zero. It will give you the maximum or minimum. Okay, so so uh, set it equal to zero to solve. So basically you're looking for the zeros. Okay. So you don't look for where the zero is. So set it equal to zero. So zero, and you can do the factoring. Factor the W. So you're going to get W equal to zero. W equal to 10, okay? So those are your two zeros. So you're gonna get zero and 10, okay? Those are your two intercepts. That means your vertex is gonna be at five, okay? So your vertex is gonna be at five. Okay, so it's gonna, your graph is gonna look like this. So your graph is gonna, so that means the W equal to five, okay? Again, you, your vertex is your, your, is your solution. So from here, you just solve for two intercepts. From there, you get your axes and that's where you'll find your maximum, okay? So W equal to five, and then from here, then we can see that L equal to 10 minus W, okay? And so, so you're gonna get L equal to 10 minus five, so L equal to five also. So basically, to get a maximum area, uh, and you, can, you need to have a centimeters, okay? So it's, it's, so it's five by five. So the area will equal to 25 centimeters square, okay? In case if you need, okay? So again, it tells you that the, the rectangle with a maximum area is when it's a, it's a square. The square will give you the maximum uh, area with the fixed parameter.